Thanks for tuning in to No Wine in No Time. I'm your host Dave and today we're going to introduce you to a wine by the name of Gentile or more appropriately Gentile de Alsace. Now Alsace France has really been the focus of a earlier No Wine in No Time video where we talk about this Franco-Germanic border region right in between France and Germany that has traded hands seven different times over the course of centuries. It currently belongs to France, but it identifies as kind of a mixture of both. And if you want to understand more about that region and its incredible terroir, I ask that you go back and check out the Alsace video. So today we're going to focus on Gentile. And much, uh, much different from most of the wines in Alsace, Gentile is a blend. So obviously you can see from my glass, it is a white wine blend. And it's so important to this area that it's one of the only ones that mandates by law that it must contain at least 50% of the noble grapes of Alsace. And those are Riesling, Muscat, Pinot Gris, and also Gewürztraminer. So let's take a look at those grapes individually. Why is it so important that they become a mixture or a blend? Or how did they become noble grapes? And why is it so important when they get together, the resultant wine is better than any of them individually? So let's look at Riesling, for example. So Riesling is quite a finesse grape. It can be sweet, it can be dry, it has quite a bit of aromatics and quite a bit of flexibility at the hand of the winemaker. Then we also look at Muscat or Moscato. And why is that part of this blend? Well, Moscato has incredible aromatics, and in the wine glass, it adds a certain perfume to the wine that it wouldn't normally have. And then we get to Pinot Gris, and Pinot Gris is in there to provide some structure to the wine. It's because it has a little bit more body, and it's something that helps to hold the wine blend together. Finally, we have Gewürztraminer, and Gewürztraminer is in there because of its incredible spiciness. So we don't often think about spiciness when we think about white wines, but Gewürztraminer is kind of been termed the spicy Riesling. So it has some Riesling-esque qualities, but a little bit spicy in the glass. So when you get those four together, you really have an incredible wine blend. So when we look at some of the other grapes that are allowed to be used, we have Sylvaner, Chasselet, and also Pinot Blanc, but they have to be minority players in this blend. We must really focus on the four noble grapes of Alsace. Also by law, when we're making a Gentile, all of those different wine grape juices must be vintified separately. In other words, we produce a Gewürztraminer wine, a Riesling wine, and we start to bring those together into a blend. After that blend has been produced, it now has to go to a tasting panel in Alsace to certify it as a proper Gentile blend. And then, and only then, can it have the name Gentile on the label and also be declared as a vintage. So really kind of a tough road with a lot of very stringent laws to get us to that point. And I think when you go out and explore and taste one of these Gentile wines, you'll understand why so much care has been put into the glass. So let's go ahead and taste one. The one I got for you today is one by the winemaker by the name of Willem. And Willem uh, actually produces this gentile with the word reserve on the bottom. So in French wine laws, especially in Alsace, there really is no reserve category. So going out and doing some research on Willem, what we see is that those folks put the word reserve on here because they focus 90% of their blend on those noble grapes. So they feel it's a little bit better of a Gentile than some of the others that might be on the market that can have a minimum of 50%. So I kind of parallel that with some of the new world wine laws where we see reserve or reserva on wine labels and they just mean that that winemaker thinks that's their better product. And I think that's something Willem's trying to do. So let's go ahead and take a look at this Gentile. 
So if we look at it in the glass, the first thing we see that it's uh, very lightly yellow. I would call it straw, but not any deeper than that. The wine itself is clear. If we swirl to liberate some of the aromas, what leaps out of the glass is kind of yellow to peachy kind of fruits. We smell everything from tints to kumquat to a little bit of orange and apricot. Really, we can feel and smell the influence of the muscat in this blend. Let's go ahead and taste the wine. When this gentile rolls across the palate, we get kind of an explosion of those kind of yellow fruits again. Think yellow delicious apple. Think of very overripe pear. And threaded through the middle of it is this beautiful honey-esque flavor. Now, the muscat that's used in here is not your typical moscato. It's not sweet. It's fermented to be quite dry as well as the other grapes that are in this blend. But they do have a very beautiful kind of almost a honeycomb type of flavor that kind of sits on the back side of the palate. We have good acidity, th acidity throughout this blend and really just a beautiful clean texture. So you might be wondering, what would we pair a gentile with? Uh, I like it with escargot. So I think it's some of the uh, kind of garlicky snail preparations that are a, a very staple of French cuisine. It goes very beautiful with that, along with some fish tartare recipes and really anything that we would melt cheese on. Uh, really, it would go beautiful with a wine like this. Really quite flexible, beautifully aromatic, and really quite complex. I would encourage you to go out and find a bottle of Gentile and do a little research yourself. And I'm going to get back and enjoy a little bit more of Willem's creation. And I ask that you tune in next time, because soon you'll know wine in no time.